When I joined Invicta Magazine as a reviewer, the powers that be asked me what kind of video games I played, what I enjoyed, what I didn't enjoy, the standard questions you would expect. One thing I distinctly remember saying was, while I enjoy them, shooty shooty bang bang games, I've been told by professionals they're known as FPSs, are most definitely not my strongest suit. My controller skills will never win any esports awards, and my reactions are far from quick enough to put me in the same postcode as even the most casual COD player. So, obviously, I was the natural choice to review Scorpius Games' futuristic roguelite FPS, Positron X. Released on the 29th of October 2020, having been in early access since April 2018, Positron X puts you in the body of an AI machine called Turing. The long and the short of the story is that in the distant future, the sun is dying, humanity is on the brink of extinction, and their only chance to survive is to, quote, travel to a distant planet little known about and make it humanity's new home. This noble goal is only slightly undercut by the very next sentence the developers wrote starting, as no human can survive the journey, which, as pitfalls in finding a new planet for the survival of the human race goes, is a pretty big one. But let's be honest here, most FPS roguelites are like pornography. No one's here for the story. The first thing I will say about Puzzletron X is that the core mechanics are pretty well done. Not game-changing or mold-breaking, but it is robust and stands up to scrutiny. The combat is visceral and satisfying, and the action when it gets going is slick. All of the weaponry has a weight to it and is well designed, and the environments, while a tad samey, are functional and serve as a balanced arena for the battles. There are plenty of spots to pick off enemies or the ubiquitous exploding barrels, and plenty of open areas if you, like me, are more of the spray and prey variety. All of this is underscored by a grungy, dirty soundtrack that kicks in just when you want it to, and when you're on a kill streak, this game really does make you feel epic. That being said, this game does have some issues and they do grab you very much by the proverbials and they do let the game down. The first one I want to mention is the way the use of the gamepad or controller is implemented. To be honest, it's very poor. This game was clearly designed to be played with mouse and keyboard. For context, I use an Xbox gaming pad. It's about as standard as they come, so there are no real or sudden surprises for the game to be dealing with. And yet, the game describes the A button as gamepad face button bottom, which, while functionally correct, is a bit of a mouthful. It's the same story for all the other buttons as well, and while this doesn't take away from the gameplay, it looks a bit cheap, if I'm honest. It's also worth noting at this point that the original controller setup, aside from the poor optimization, also makes very little sense. Who the hell sets jump to the left shoulder button? Unless I've missed a big change in gaming conventions, that would feel unnatural to most gamers. Now, both of these problems are admittedly small, but after over two years in early access, I would personally expect any developer worth their salt to be at least able to label the controller button commands correctly, and give us a fairly generic controller setup that most of us would understand straight out of the box. And in terms of quote-unquote problems with this game, that's the theme throughout. They aren't game-breaking, but they seem like lazy development rather than bad game design. The enemy AI, for example, is a little bit slow at times. I've blown the metallic skulls off an entire room full of robots and still one in the far corner hasn't noticed, which kind of slows down the action a bit and after two years in early access I would have thought that somebody would have either mentioned it to them or it has been mentioned and they would have sorted it. Now all of that being said, I don't want to be unfair to Positron X. As roguelites go, it's really not a bad one. The difficulty curve is about what you'd expect it to be, excruciating at the start and gradually getting easier as you progress through the levels, improve your stats and unlock new versions of Turing with different abilities and modifiers. And the overall design of the game is solid, but it suffers from the same problem all roguelikes suffer from. Once you know how to beat a given stage, it all gets very dull very quickly, which is why I personally don't play them. That and the aforementioned being very bad at them. So with that in mind, I have a bit of a dilemma when it comes to scoring the game. On the one hand, it's a good game. On the other hand, I didn't enjoy it. The individual moments within the combat are good, but the overall experience did not leave me wanting more. And while I do enjoy a challenge and appreciate a good grind now and then, ooh matron, I find it very difficult to enjoy a game that is built wholly around the grind. I think I'm going to award it a 6 out of 10 with an asterisk. 
If you enjoy roguelike and or roguelite games, then this is a pretty good one. If you, like me, just occasionally enjoy a mindless shooter, this will scratch that itch, but you can probably find a better one for less than $17.99 which will do the same job, but this wouldn't be a total waste of your money. I've been Chris for Invicta Magazine and thank you for watching. Let us know what you think in the comments and if you enjoyed it please do give this video a like and a share. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and keep up with all our latest content. You can also find us on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter, plus we stream regularly on Twitch and you can find all those links in the description below along with our website. See you next time, goodbye for now.